In this tutorial, we'll look at how to precisely measure an angle. There are actually a number of devices that people use to measure angles. The sextant, for sailors since the 16th century, a common way to navigate on the ocean was through the use of the sun, moon, and stars, and a sextant to measure the angle of these objects above the horizon. It's commonly believed that the eye patches we often relate to pirates were needed due to the overuse of sextants and having the sun reflecting into their eyes, causing eye damage. Sextants were used for centuries, and they're even used today, more carefully of course, by ship captains and even NASA astronauts. A clinometer is an angle measuring device commonly used by forestry workers and geologists to measure angles. The clinometer makes it quite easy to measure the angle to the top of a tree, a cliff or even a building. This allows the calculation of the height to these objects without having to try and climb them. All you need is your clinometer and a knowledge of trigonometry, which we'll learn later. If you see a new construction area, you're bound to see some surveyors out mapping the area for both boundaries and construction preparation. To make these precise measurements, surveyors use transits or theodolites to measure the angles involved. Construction workers, who regularly need to quickly compare angles for cutting wood or tiles or brick, have a variety of tools to be able to cut those angles precisely. We may not appreciate the effort they put into angles until you see someone who doesn't understand how to use these tools properly. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the simplest and most common angle measuring device, the protractor. Example 1. We want to measure this angle, angle ABC. First, let's estimate. It's always good to get a feel for your answer. How do we get a rough estimate of this angle? Well, we know that this angle would be 0 degrees, that's our starting point, and we can also mark in this as 90 degrees, and all the way over here is 180 degrees. And at this point we can see that our angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. Let's draw in one more reference. We know that the halfway between 0 and 90 degrees is 45 degrees. 45 degrees is that perfect angle for throwing a football or a baseball as far as you can, right between 0 and 90 degrees. Now we can see that our angle is between 0 and 45 degrees, closer to the 45 degrees. So let's estimate that our angle is about 30 degrees. So now Let's make the more precise measurement with our protractor. So here's our protractor, and we move the protractor so that the midpoint of the protractor is right on our angle's vertex, the point B in this case, and we line them up. The next step is to line up our zero line with one of the sides of our angle, BC in this case. Make sure we keep the midpoint on the vertex, and we're all lined up and it's time to measure. We notice that there are two sets of numbers on the protractor. One starts at zero over here and goes up 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, up to 90 degrees here, and 180 degrees way over here. Now the other set of numbers starts at zero on this side, and it goes up to 10, 20, 30, 40, and on up to 90 at the top. Now we note that the 90 is in the exact same location. In our case, this will count as our zero line, and we go from there, 10, 20, 30, and then we count the small increments, five, and so we have an angle of 30 plus five, or 35 degrees. Angle ABC is 35 degrees. And we compare that with our estimate, and yeah, they're both in the same range. It makes sense. In this tutorial, we learned about measuring angles. There are a number of ways to measure angles, but the best tool for many purposes is the simple protractor. To use a protractor, 
you need to first align the midpoint of the protractor with the vertex of the angle, like this. Next, you'll line up the zero line of the protractor with one side of the angle. And finally, you measure using the appropriate set of numbers, depending on where you're measuring from.